Um, so, hi everyone. This is the Cert Manager Public Dev Biweekly. Um, it's Wednesday, the 21st of April, 2021. Um, a couple of new faces, if they um, like to do introductions. Start start with David, if you, if you want to. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. So I'm David. Uh, I am a new employee at Jetstack. I uh, started last week. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of joining in today because I'm interested in contributing more to a uh, cert manager, considering I'm, I'm working at Jetstack now. So yeah. Excellent. And I'm Jake, and we're a male, Josh, Hervé, and Ashley, who are from the cert manager team at Jetstack. Um, any more introductions? Because uh... uh, I'll introduce myself. Hi, I'm uh, Akbar. I'm an engineer at AWS working on uh, cert manager integration. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Param Sharma. We have already, few of us have already met uh, in the previous meetings. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the senior engineers on the ACM private CA team in the Amazon side. Uh, so Akbar is on my team. So we are working on looking at uh, adding test cases to the issuer plugin and uh, just just here to hear about the conformance test cases. Cool. I guess I'll, I'll move your item up the agenda slightly. We'll start with Cert Manager news. So we released a version 1.3.1 patch last week. This was to fix a couple of issues. Firstly was the same CRD validation issue that we had with slightly older versions of Kubernetes before 1.20 and Helm. It was a bit annoying that we released with the same issue as <laughs> because we also had to fix that for version 1.2. Um, and we'll make some better testing so we don't ever, ever hit that again. <laughs> the other thing that was fixed in that patch was that under certain conditions with the new approval controller, a certificate request might not end up with any ready condition at all. I believe that. I believe that's correct, Josh. Uh, yes, I believe that is correct. That's fixed now. So it's not technically breaking, but maybe someone in the world has re was relying on a certificate request containing a ready condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of um, yeah, basically reintroduce the same behavior that we had before. Like, again, I don't think it's really catching anyone um, and they shouldn't. Yeah, it's academic again, I think is the way to describe it. Um, so any other 1.31 news that I missed? From? I don't think so, but <laughs> before moving on to the next item. Right, so uh, ne the next item is document conformance tests for external issuers. So the context of this is that uh, yeah, AWS and representatives here have been in contact with us to work out how we will accept external projects into the Cert Manager organization, because we had no real process. And the f this is the first offer of external support for a uh, project, which is, which is nice. And this is basically to add good support for AWS's private certificate authority. I guess from our side, uh, we are actively working on adding unit tests and integration tests like we talked in our previous meeting. Uh, because that was called out one of the acceptance criteria. Um, so I guess in addition to that, what else is uh, needed? Uh, and, and I know we talked about the CI system, but because there, there was a still talk about the infrastructure being in place and how those test cases are going to run daily. Uh, so I think that that's probably a separate uh, thing. But to start with, 
uh, at least from our side, we're going to have unit test and integra integration test PR submitted in next week. Uh, that's our plan. Um, so we are just waiting on our internal legal to sign off. Um, we have our internal process around it. So once that's done, we will be submitting a CR hopefully by end of this week or early next week. That That's what is our plan. Awesome, because this lines up fairly well with, why, I guess, our next, it's on the agenda, but we're going to really set up an automation drive around cert manager testing. So like we'll put, there's, there's two parts. We want to automate our release process. And as part of that, improve lots of automated upgrade testing and like, integration testing. So I guess maybe by the next meeting, like as this meeting's every two weeks, we might be able to come together and talk about whether like testing it against real AWS PCA on some sponsored infrastructure or something like that. That, that sounds great. Uh, I guess from our side, if we have unit test and integration test in place, is that is that something that's meeting the acceptance criteria and we can do everything else like as a follow-on work? Would that work? Um, so we we do need to define that, and it's on us, some official. Oops. That's fair. But yeah. I, can't, I can't really think of anything else that, that one. Yeah. So I, I, I posted this in our internal chat, but someone on our team actually needs to own the acceptance criteria or it will just keep getting pushed forward, pushed down the line. Oh yeah, that's a good point, yes. So yeah, I yeah. think we'll, we will, that's right in the notes then that we'll aim to have acceptance criteria at least like written down for two weeks time. I, th I think that sounds great. And we did hear back from Chris uh, and I think Micah updated the GitHub sim with the notes from Chris's email. Uh, so Chris defined like there are like different ways uh, to accept a project. I know we were talking about like the legal process around uh, like how CNCF is going to take in uh, this issue once cert manager moves in there. Uh, so, so it looks like there is like a like a voting uh, criteria that uh, and I remember Micah adding uh, just the security group that we created earlier uh, for vulnerability response procedure. Um, so, so I guess that that will be the place either to start start the voting process, like once we have the PR out, uh, or we can talk in more detail, like how does it look from there? Um, actually, we can merge one of the agenda items into this because I just put it in there because yeah, Ashley has uh, done that. So maybe you can say a couple of words. Sure, yeah. Um, uh, first thing to say is thank you to the AWS people um, and Amazon more generally for suggesting this. The, the um, checklist that Micah gave us in the issue um, that you raised was super useful for getting this done. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Um, the there's, there's not a huge amount to say on it because it's, we've intentionally kept it quite simple. Um, to start off with, uh, something is better than nothing, and this will probably last us a long time, which is another thing that Micah hinted at. We have a Google group now, um, which uh, essentially is the, consists of the cert manager team who can read emails sent to that group um, and no one else, uh, but anyone can send emails to that group. There's no PGP or anything like that. I don't, I don't think that's necessary at all. Uh, and yeah, it, like I say, it's, it's simple. And um, the process is documented in uh, the major public projects which form part of Cert Manager, which is the Cert Manager itself, Istio CSR, um, and the Cert Manager website. Uh, and the, the security reporting process applies to all of those. Uh, we have a, a checklist item um, for potentially having a sort of embargoed advance notice process for large, larger users of Cert Manager or interested parties. Um, there's been no work on that. There's been no suggestion that there's anyone who's particularly interested in that, but it might be uh, interesting for us to put out the feelers to find out more. In any case, it's, it's merged. And I think the the big unexpected nice thing about this is when you go to raise an issue in cert manager now github actually has a some sugar on the ui which sees that security md is there and um suggests the correct process based on what's in that file 
Um, so if someone finds a security vulnerability and goes to raise a GitHub issue about it, they'll get sort of redirected off to the process, which is really nice. Uh, I didn't know that was a feature. That's good to see. Awesome. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, any more points to add on the kind of general external contribution process? Cool. So I guess move on to the, move on to the, actually I'll move this up because it's a little bit more relevant. And then, yeah, because then it's still relevant to the external people. And then we can go and talk about the internal things. So, like, my next kind of set manager project is I alluded to it earlier. It's the kind of automation drive. I've, I've made a document that I put in the, uh, in, not, that I put in the agenda about what I aim to do. Or what we aim to do. It's not. It's not me. <laughs> and the idea is that by the end of this, anyone, because right now you have to be part of part of Jetstack, and you have to follow some kind of a vague number of manual steps to perform a set manager release. So by the end of this kind of automation drive and automation implementation, the idea is that anyone should be able to for any anyone from any any organization who's been trusted should be able to run a full set manager release. As it will take away all the manual steps, it will make, enable us to release alphas much quicker. And this also helps community because people want to test features that, are, that they've managed to land. And right now, they normally have to wait till quite near the end of the release cycle when we'll release a few alphas. But if it's properly automated, as soon as a feature lands, we should be able to just press a button and release an alpha. And then people can test it, and everyone's happier. So yeah, I think a lot of this, this will go well with uh, external contributions, because then yeah, they'll be able to test it. And if that requires like specialized infrastructure, we'll have some like build or test containers that they'll be able to run on their own infrastructure. That kind of makes sense, and there's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot of there's a lot of detail, so it's mostly in the document. <laughs> so, and yeah. Another another thing in this under this point is uh, again to make it easier for external contributors. Erve has been looking at uh, removing the requirement on Bazel to build because then Kubernetes upstream has just done this and. Set managers always kind of tried to loosely follow the Kubernetes upstream release processes. So over to Eve. <laughs> um, yeah, so this was, so we use Bazel for pretty much everything uh, from like running tests to building Helm charts. And it does feel like external contributors run into issues with that and issues that are hard to debug because in order to do that they need to understand Bazel and they don't necessarily do that. They don't necessarily understand it and I think there can potentially be also less motivation for people to try to understand it since it's not that commonly used and it is fairly complex. Like I had issues with that myself when I started, although now I've kind of started liking it a little bit. Um, so I've looked into how we could possibly remove it and probably replace with make and just like bash scripts. Um, there, yeah, there seem to be some issues around that still because we would still end up having like lots of tools that would be pulled in that would need to be versioned somehow and kept up to date. Like at the moment, uh, Bazel, apart from caching, it also ensures that basically we use the same version of various tools in CI and in locally. Um, like things like kind for end to end tests and customize and Helm, etc. So if we were to do that without it, we would kind of somehow still need to manage it. 
Um, and also related to that is the stuff is the fact that we have a lot of like in our core code base we have a lot of infra infrastructure code like we package helm we make we create helm we have all the code to make helm charts in the same search manager core code base which i think is a little bit probably makes it harder to be debug and harder to understand what's happening so yeah um i had like a dev day just yesterday for that i think i guess i just need to make like a design proposal for this or something like that i don't know what would be the best i think it depends on jake's automation work because then it would be clearer once that is done okay thanks Eric. and yeah i guess we will create some documents Any more, anything more on the kind of automation testing? Okay. I, I guess, sorry, I guess the yeah. test grid actually falls into the same red, like test grid in Pro. Ah, which true. Is just underneath. Let's move, let's move it up. So, test grid. So, yeah, right now, uh, a lot of our <laughs> we get a lot of test grid emails for test failures, and I think a lot of them are transient, which means that sometime we if the alerts are too noisy, everyone stops paying attention to them, and this is bad. <laughs> yeah, and like for a pro and test grid, there are fairly undocumented bits, and like there are. Like it, for some to fix it, they seem a little bit maybe not that stable and not that well documented since it's partially, I guess, their internal project rather than um, a tool that you uh, offer people or product. So there is quite a bit of overhead of like trying to understand them because you end up reading test grid code rather than. Um, so there is like. It does feel like there does feel like that there does feel to be a risk in that we have CI failures due to pro changes, and in order to understand how to fix that, we actually need to read pro code. So it's kind of um, it does feel a bit, yeah, it does feel a bit risky. I guess this it's under the same banner of making external contributions easy. Because again, yeah, we've seen PRs, and then you get a random test grid failure, and uh, they don't understand it, and then the PR gets abandoned. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think at the very least, making it as fixing as many flakes as possible would change that. So, I specifically didn't in in the automation design doc. I sp specifically put we're not going to get rid of prow or uh, cloud build at the moment because it that's another gigantic piece of work but it's we should definitely try and make it less as li as little flakes as possible okay Can we move on <laughs> um the next item is vault to show change fallout so we had a we had a patch submitted by by a community member for for 1.3 that changed the behavior of the vault issuer and in the ideal circumstance this makes the issuer behavior correct but then it broke it broke people that had, had configured vault in a specific way which it was a if they only had a single issuer, if they only had a single intermediate loaded into Vault without loading in the uh, root CA as well, so that manager will put an will will loop, will put the intermediate in the root CA part of the secret rather than having a blank root CA and chaining the and then putting the chain as normal in TLS part of the secret. So we've already had a bit of discussion about this on the Slack channel. 
And the answer is we need more uh, tests, <laughs> as far as I'm aware. You know, this is how HashiCorp actually recommends, like in their tutorial, how to set up PKI, they recommend to only put intermediate and not the root. So I guess it's probably, maybe it's a common, maybe everyone does it like that. Yeah, so I mean, this is more of a lessons learned for us. We should we should have had better integration testing around the vault issuer before just accepting the change. Our end-to-end -end test uh, vault instance is also configured in this way. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to find the this PR that got merged. Where, where oh. is it? I'm trying. To, could we put the link uh, somewhere on yeah. the other document? I shall. I shall add it. Where is this? I I added it. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll delete it. SPR three four three three. Ah, thank you. Yeah, so that would be uh, more tests. Yeah, that's and also I guess documentation around what we suggest. Like what we suggest is. A good practice. I don't know. I thought like th this use case that people had on the Cert Manager channel, we could use that uh, to add like like a, a suggestion on the website on the Cert Manager website as to not to do this or not not that it is bad, but it is something. That is usually not the great idea, I guess. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to open a PR if I understand the issue. <laughs> I first have to understand it. <laughs> there is a linked issue um, by Irve for adding better tests, if I can find that as well. That was just for testing. Yeah, that was for adding. That was also for testing with a vault instance that has the root CA. Um, that was for Eric's uh, not yet uh, yes. merged PR. Um, it's, it's this issue 3894. There's and you can tidy the notes. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a kind of this is a lesson learned for us. We should it's considering the all out of innocuous changes. Because <laughs> the change was introduced to correct a behavior, but it's resulted in some incorrect behavior with a different configuration. <laughs> Anyone have anything else to add on the vault change fallout or any best practice that they've experienced in the past? Or... We still haven't decided if Eric's change is the way we want to go, I guess, but that's probably not necessarily a question for now. We can comment on the various GitHub threads that are linked in here, I guess. Okay, next, we the crypto fork that we were relying on has been uh, moved. Anyone? If this is this was uh, Irve's project, so I guess back to you. <laughs> yeah, it's now moved from March's personal account to Cert Manager Org. So we are we are we are. Which is better, and we are um, using upstream for one of the functionalities that we used to use fork before. So we are closer to using upstream crypto again. 
which is good. So the context is, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, we had to use a fork of Golang X crypto because we needed to add support for external account bindings for Acme, the Acme protocol. And there was a change set waiting to go into Golang X crypto. So the fork, we, much a previous maintainer just forked Golang X crypto and applied the patch set and kept it in her normal GitHub account. And it was probably better to make sure that we align with X crypto upstream as much as possible. And if, if we have to use any fork stuff, move it under the set manager org rather than someone's random personal org. <laughs> so that's the context for that. I think yeah, we're mostly mostly or mostly able to use upstream. There's just one more thing. Right. Alternative uh, fetching of the alternative certificate chains, which become an um, potential problem when Let's Encrypt was going to switch the um, what was it the root certificate they were using from from the one from this other authority to their own. Um, and that deadline actually was moved later, so it's not that significant anymore, but to be able to optionally fetch alternative chains. Um, but there is an open change log in upstream crypto for implementing uh, alternative certificate chains, so we'll be able to use upstream once that change log gets merged. Okay, so yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. So then there will be Ooh. no longer use for, no longer have to use a fork of the Golang crypto libraries. <laughs> Okay, I can see that Eric boy, boy, Eric, Eric Golding, Golding boy, who is the person who worked on the Vault CA, not the Vault CA, but he bumped into the Vault integration test issues, and he is, uh, he seems to be in the document, not on the call, but on the document. So, hi, if he, if you are looking at me on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we can go ahead. Cool. Well, I think that's it for this point. Anyone have any more questions about the crypto fork? We're almost almost done with it. <laughs> Thank you, Marsha, for doing this anyways. <laughs> okay. So next point is Documenting set manager backup and restore. I have no idea who put this on the agenda, so go ahead. <laughs> I only put it there because, um, like, I was, I, I kind of have been trying to document it because another related issue. And, like, there were a couple of interesting things that came up, like, because user have, users had been complaining about this. Like, one was the fact that. Um, like one is solvable, which is that you should not back up and restore like the one-time resources, like order certificate requests, etc. And there is an there was another issue that I ran into today, which was that um, with the Ingress shim certificates, the owner reference does not get like you can't properly back up and restore that because if you do like full full cluster restore, which kind of yeah that kind of seems like an issue that probably people wouldn't be able to easily solve by automatable means. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I kind of put it there because I was just hoping that maybe someone hears it, maybe someone else comes up with like an interesting use case because it, it is like the kind of issue that you can't quite, like I'm kind of trying to do some local tests, but it's interesting what kind of issues people run into when they actually do it on real clusters. So kind of gathering that log. But we have an issue like um, that tracks this, that would allow anyone interested interested in this, this work to follow along. Um, on the website, I could put it into the chat. Oh, thank you. No, thanks to you for mentioning it. It's actually a good idea. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm for every bullet point, I'm trying to have a link so that people can uh, subscribe or things like that.
where uh, where did you put the link? Sorry, I I forgot. Still <laughs> in the process it? of finding it. I'll let ah, you sorry. Ah, oh yeah, sorry. Okay, thanks. That was great. Thank you. So it's an open issue to basically write write better documentation of how to back up and restore when you are moving to a different cluster or reinstalling set manager or whatever. So the last part, the, moving on to the last part, 1.4 roadmap. So we started uh, at the end of last week, triaging issues that are going to go into the 1.4 release. And the major feature that we're going to target is the one Josh has been leading, which is to have a full policy approve and deny engine in place. Um, I, I don't know if you so I created this issue that I, I where I try to have what you just said written down again so that we can refer to it and let people know if anyone is interested to know what's the progress or, or what our like what our internal roadmap is then uh, they can they can do this they can take a look at this subscribe if they if they want to and uh, so yeah, um, if, if if that's possible, it would be nice if... Uh, so I, I created this issue, but I, what I put at the top is anyone that can, um, feel free to edit the description to add more uh, information and like edit the roadmap and so on. For example, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, for each of the four goals that I have set, I'm trying to give links for people to follow the work uh, so that, I don't know, we're more transparent, I guess. Um, and it's, yeah, I think we have been struggling with tracking the whole, like, for example, I never know what's the current status for each individual big piece of work. Um, I have to look around and it's really hard for me to, to track things. So that's it. That's one attempt to um, make it easier for us to like know what what is what do we have what is in front of us what's the goal. Uh, but uh, it is not for me to do like. Uh, but please edit this issue or put updates. Uh, but please do it. Yeah, I, I was going to follow up saying we've only just started triaging the 1.4 milestone, so it's not complete yet. <laughs> so we'll have to do... Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So we do have to... But this is a great place to uh, centralize, I guess. So thanks for making that issue. Uh, it's just a draft at the moment. Maybe I should put it as a draft somewhere. I'll, I'll put it as a draft. I'll say this is just a draft. Uh, please wait until like the first or second alpha. Um, and also I put some dates just so that we can uh, have a sense or feel uh, like how far or how close the wanted for release is. And for example, I just randomly pick dates, so every every time I, I choose Wednesday because Wednesday <laughs> looks nice. So, for example, the first alpha could be next week. And the, only date, the only date that's set in stone is the final release date. Right, we decided for one point three that we will release on that date, even if some features drop to the next release. And I think that's what we're continuing with. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's everything I wanted to share. So uh, wait, maybe I could I could share uh, the four items that I have right now. They may change because like I'm trying, I'm just trying to have like an overview of the big things that we want to push. But I didn't put any like contributor 
may be contributor changes that uh, we want to have in inside the 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 one that for release. Uh, but I, I'll I'll try to add more items uh, as we go. But the the first one, as you said, approval API. We want to have this engine available for user to use, for users to use. Um, it, it 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 is the goal is to have it out of tree out of tree. And uh, Josh is the one leading this effort. I, I didn't put any issue, any links, because I don't really know which ones I should be linking. Like any open issue that we can put to, uh, to like, if we, if we want to know what's the state of this. Breeze autom automation, we've already talked about this. Sorry, um, I'm, what I'm saying right now is this issue 3908 that uh, I, yeah. I should probably link it. Uh, yeah, so release automation, uh, we struggled. We want, uh, Jake wants to drive this this effort towards more automation. This is great because we are struggling with our alphas. Like we can't really do a lot of alphas because <clears throat> it takes 40 minutes for at least two people. Uh, uh, 40 minutes, so it's, it's and it is very error prone, <laughs> as we have noticed. Huh. And is the onboarding contributors? I just added this one. I don't think it's like a major thing. Although for me it's major, but uh, I don't think it's like a major thing we want in one that for. I don't know. What do you think, uh, Airbnb? Is it like a big thing that we want to? Like it's a it's a goal we really want to have in one dot four, or is it something like a long term idea? Uh, sorry. Uh, so yeah, let me rephrase then. Airbay, do you think this the the, the basil removing basil would be we, like a great a great thing that we can announce to the world, or is it something? Like it was just in a stage of um, investigating whether this is something we do want to do. Like there, we, oh, okay, I don't yeah. think we have ever said that we will do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll remove this uh, and put it. I don't like, know I'll if comment it. I'll comment think it. This and, otherwise, and I'll, I'll comment it from the thing. I'll, I won't remove it because it's it's a nice item, but I I will comment it out. <laughs> Because like we, uh, I, yeah, you're right. It's investigate. It, it's uh, you're I think it's maybe you know. can like it. It can out of that can maybe it can be something about maybe simplifying the workflows around cert manager so that it's not necessarily called base or removal. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, other things can grow out of that. Yeah, you're right. And so one one action in this category of easing onboarding. New this would be, would be yeah. You would be investigating the idea of removing basil, um, and maybe actually removing it. But let's just investigate for now. <laughs> okay, I'll do. I'll, I'll edit this, and then the fin final thing again. Maybe it's not really a major thing, and I might, I might put it in the same thing as onboarding, like e easing. Is the process of onboarding? Uh, it's the project quality thing. Uh, I, I, I propose to I, I propose to make our release notes like inf inform more people about our release notes. Uh, make them great so that people read it. Like they they really want to see it. It's like um, on some projects I. I I love reading their changelog because it is informative, it is interesting, it is even entertaining. So I think we can, there are some ways to improve it. And I, there, there is a link to the, my, the the plan that I propose. It's just like tiny actions, like trying to find examples of good re, uh, release notes and maybe discussing it in this uh, dev meeting. Uh, and things like that. And so the the first step uh, that I listed in the three nine zero one issue that is at the bottom of, of the the roadmap is it says talk about it 
in the dev meeting, the bi-weekly tab meeting. So that that's done. Um, I talked about this. Yeah, that's everything I wanted to share about this wonderful release uh, roadmap. Uh, again, it's a way to uh, gain, like, have more transparency and be more project manager, project, like, be, be better at project things. But I don't know the name, but uh, linking, ma making sure people can understand what's, what's going on. Um, or just us, just making sure we don't, we understand what's going on. <laughs> That'll be nice. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Anyone else want to add anything verbal for chat? Hey, Jake, uh, I just had one thing. I think we we probably need to create an action item from Chris's email. So he has mentioned about adding project governance uh, to sort manager starter. Uh, and I guess uh, until until we uh, have that in place, he suggested an alternate route for uh, like usually voting it in a public fashion. And he has given an example there. Um, so is this something we need to create a GitHub issue for to track it? Or, or should we create the issue once we have PR merged in from our side for the test cases? Um, I guess this is this should be just with us the same, the same as the same thing that is we it? should write our performance preference. We should also write our project governance. But yeah, and there are, you're right. Chris gave us some examples, so it should shouldn't be too difficult. Unless we'll aim to bring it to the next meeting. That's that's a second action. Okay, thanks. Um, Sounds great. Thank you. OK, so that's everything that we had to discuss. So I'll stop the recording. <laughs>